Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, welcome to, to Physics, Physics with Beth and Beth. Hey y'all, welcome to our AP Physics 1 curriculum. We're in Unit 1, 1D, and today we're talking about free fall. So let's just jump right into it and talk about what free fall is. It's when an object is only acted upon by gravity. So you've got a ball, you throw it up in the air, it comes down, only gravity's acting on it. It has no motor to change the acceleration. It's, we're just looking at the Earth's pull, natural pull on that object. All right, we're gonna ignore air resistance. That means, what is air resistance? It's friction due to air. In other words, we're living in this happy bubble of free fall where there is no air and you can't breathe, and welcome to physics. <laughs> uh, free fall, we're also gonna look at 1D, meaning that this ball is only moving vertically. It's not moving a horizontal component yet, but in free fall, we're just looking at straight up or straight down. In other words, it's moving vertically and what we would consider on like the y-axis. You wanna think about a graph. All right, acceleration is constant. Here's the beauty of free fall, is you know if you're on Earth, your acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And in other words, you're like, oh no, here we go. The word problems are getting even harder. It's free fall. No, take a deep breath. Let the stress go because you are using the same three equations, big three, that you've been using in this 1D unit. It's just instead of acceleration changing, depending on your train or your car and how much power they have to accelerate those vehicles, your acceleration, if you're on Earth, is just going to be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. You already know it. In other words, remember acceleration is that change in velocity over time. So what does that mean? It means for every second an object falls, or you throw it up, either one, it's going to be changing a negative 9.81 meters per second. That's all it means for every second. It's probably worth noting right here that the AP board will allow you to use a negative 10 meters per second squared. Makes the problems faster, easier math. Um, and I certainly, had my, I certainly have my students practice that in April and leading up to the exam with negative 10, but the engineer in me loves those sig figs. And I like them to use negative 9.81 for most of the school year. But that's totally up to your teacher and either one is fine. All right, it's also worth noting that on the moon, uh, moon, other planets, other moons, that, but on our moon, the acceleration is negative 1.625 meters per second per second. Just to give you some comparison, they'll either have you calculate that in problems or they'll give it to you in a problem. So you don't have to memorize this, but this you should just know. All right, now let's just jump into some concepts. Uh, one other thing to note is this is an average. If you're at top of Mount Everest, for instance, that's uh, high enough and gives you enough uh, different distance to the, our core, to our center, that your acceleration is like a negative 9.77. But we're gonna use this as an average, okay? Now, let's talk about concepts. I'm gonna talk about throwing this ball up, and then it's at the top, and then it comes back down. All right, in other words, just this movement, straight up, straight down. All right, when I am lifting this, and this is gonna be some concepts for your word problems coming up. If I'm throwing a ball up in the air, I have to give it initial velocity. If I don't give it initial velocity, it just sets here. So we're gonna give that some initial velocity, and then it's gonna be going fast, but it's gonna get slower and slower and slower and slower until it hits the top, and it stops just for a split second. It's gonna to stop to turn around, and then it's gonna start slowly falling down, and then it's gonna speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up, until it hits the ground. Now, the next unit again, when we start adding air resistance in, you're gonna hear this term called terminal velocity where it actually doesn't speed up anymore. But in this free fall unit, we are ignoring that. So as long as it's falling, it is speeding up until it hits the ground. All right, so we're gonna look at this movement. So I mentioned that as it goes up, it is slowing down. And why is that? How do I know that? All right, well look, we've defined up as positive. So our velocity, and let me change markers, so I can get a different color so you can see this. Um, my slowing down, my velocity is up, so it's positive. But my acceleration, I told you, is always negative 9.81 meters per second squared. 
We talked about this, that's a squared. We talked about this um, concept in some of our other concept videos that I told you would come back and haunt you all year long, and it will, that if your velocity is positive and you're slowing down, then your acceleration is negative because these refer to directions. And acceleration is in the opposite direction of your velocity, it's down. We said that acceleration is gonna be negative, which means it is down. The earth is always pulling you down. The John Mayer song, Gravity, Gravity, it's pulling you down. It's exactly right. So after this video, if you want to listen to that song, it helps remember that. It helps you get that in your mind. All right, then we get to the top. When we go up, it slows down, slows down until it stops for just that split second to change direction. So your velocity is zero. Your acceleration, though, is still negative 9.81 meters per second squared, meaning down in the down direction. This is such a common error among students. Please don't make that error. Students want to say, hey, if my velocity is zero, my acceleration must be zero. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's a no. All right. When you throw this ball up and it momentarily stops to change directions, if your acceleration was zero, guess what happens to all these balls? They just, whatever you throw up in the air, they stop. They hang out in space. All right. They just hang out in our sky. They don't come back down if your acceleration were turned off. It's not like you throw this ball up and it gets up to the top and it stops and Earth says, ah, never mind, I'm shutting off gravity today for the rest of the day. So just hang out there, don't come down. No, what you throw up must come down, right? So because acceleration stays a consistent negative 9.81 and it starts bringing it down. Your velocity as it comes down, now you are at your top, it stops, now it's coming down, it's gonna go slow, 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 and then it's gonna go slow at first, and then it's gonna speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up. Your velocity is negative, why? Because it's going down. We defined that as negative. Your acceleration, negative 9.81. Do you see a pattern here? Acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Whether you're going up, whether you're at the top and stopped, whether you're coming down, it does not change. It is constant. Constant, meaning not changing. So, and look at this. I told you you're speeding up. Same signs, which means same direction. Velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, so you are indeed speeding up. Now, let's look at a little deeper meaning of what this means with some times. I have a ball that I'm throwing up. I get to the top, and then it's coming back down. And I'm throwing it up here. And then on this side, I'm coming down. So this is my one second and two seconds. Let me actually put my one second and two second on this side so you don't get that confused. All right, perfect. So I'm giving it some initial velocity of 19.6 meters per second. And it's positive because it's going up. All right, after one second, so I'm at one second here, I am now at negative, I'm now at positive 9.81 meters per second. How do I know that? Because for every second I am changing a negative 9.81 meters per second, meaning that I added, oh that's my dog, Annie has joined us. Right now it's physics with Beth and Beth and Annie, my lab. That's her that you hear in the background. But I've added a negative 9.81 meters per second, and so now I am at a positive 9.81 meters per second. I have indeed slowed down. I went from 19.6 to 19.81. Then I get to the top, my velocity is zero. That's one more second. So I have that negative, I'm adding a negative 9.81 meters per second in my velocity because due to that acceleration, and now I'm at zero. Right, I am slowing down. Now I'm at the top, my velocity is zero meters per second. So I'm now coming down. My velocity is, guess what? Negative 9.81 meters per second. Why is that? Because my acceleration was, was adding a negative 9.81 meters per second every second. So now I'm at negative. I go another second and I'm at negative 19 0.62 meters per second. Let's do negative 19.6 meters per second. And that's after two seconds here falling. 
Here's what you need to know. Look, the top is zero, of course. It went up, it stopped, and it came back down. But look at our time at one second. Our velocities are exactly the same. Well, I shouldn't say that. Our speeds are exactly the same. But our velocity is positive because it's going up. It's negative because it's going down. At the original, when I gave it 19.6 meters per second, initial velocity up, well, since it's at the exact same height, must be, look, these are at the same height, these are at the same height, then I'm at negative 19.6. Why? Why are these numbers the same? Just one's positive because it's up and one's negative because it's down because our acceleration was consistent. It was negative 9.81 meters per second squared. For every second, my acceleration changed in negative 9.81 meters per second. Now, one more concept to go over really quickly. When you drop a ball, we talked about if you throw a ball up in the air, you're going to have to give it initial velocity or it sets in your hand. If you drop a ball, this is why my Annie is really here. I wish I could show you. She's right at my feet because she wants this ball to, to play with. All right, she's ready for me to throw it, and she thinks I'm getting ready to drop it. But anyway, so she's right below my feet. But uh, when you drop it, your velocity always starts at zero. It's at rest. So your initial velocity is zero. All right, and then it's going to speed up. If this were two seconds again, let's say it's one second here. Well, then it's negative 9.81 meters per second. Now, your big three, it's also worth noting. We're going to have a video. You need to watch the videos. We're going to do a couple of classic free fall problems. But your final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, and time, your big three all look the same. But really, your velocity is in the y direction. And your acceleration's in the y direction. I like to call this one oi, like oi. We got more free fall problems to do. All right, but anyway, your acceleration in the y is going to be negative 9.81 as long as you're on earth here, squared. Now, your final velocity, same thing, all y's. But look at this. We did have a delta x here, meaning displacement in the horizontal direction. Now, I like to sub in delta y here, displacement in the vertical direction. All right, and then I have my final position in the y, my initial position in the y. I sub those in instead of x final and x not, x initial, uh, because we are moving only in the vertical. You can also use delta s as that generic term that means horizontal or vertical. Um, but anyway, I like to have the y's because we are going to our 2D motion where we're going to need to keep those two directions separate. So I like to start now understanding that we're only moving in the y. But Thank you for listening. We have another, you need to watch, or you sh you need to watch the other video on, because we're not talking about problems yet. So if you're having problems with the free fall problems, watch the next video on free fall problems. And then um, hopefully you'll be all set and you'll understand this with the concepts and the practice on the problems. Thank you for watching and happy physicsing.